Hello, and welcome to more Heroes of the Storm. Today, we are going to do a voiceover of a match that we played earlier. Uh, and so we are the red team. That's what we played against the blue team. The members who will be commentating with me are Flop and Eskimo. Uh, Flop here, as you can see, is on Leoric. Eskimo is on Sergeant Hammer. I, Leafy, am on Nova. Uh, Aurorus on Diablo, and what does that say? Allerdeck? Allered? Yeah, yeah. On Lily. On the opposing team, we have Shatterface on Illidan. That's a great name. Matrumbo <laughs> on Raynor. Panzer on Tyrande. Commande on Sonya, and Ritius on Uther. Nice. So, uh, yeah, we. This is the not our first time playing with Devin, but um, we are very happy to have him. He is Eskimo, of course. Um, and here we go into the match. So, Devin, talk to us about the talents. You're more experienced. What's up? I can go over the talents real quick. Um, everything is pretty standard right now for uh, looking at the Illidan, the Rainer. Um, he picked up seasoned uh, marksman, which is great on this map. It's small, you can gather stacks. Um, it's just going to carry out in the late game. Thronde, standard Rangers mark. Um, anything with stacks on this map is extremely strong. Uh, I like to go regen master for some health on hammer personally. Uh, the block on the orc is also very important against their comp with a Sonya, Raynor, and Illidan. Um, a lot of their damage is going to be coming from auto attacks, so that's going to help out later. And uh, on top of that, it's interesting to see the Diablo went Devil's Do, which is not a very common uh, talent. So we yes. start off here fairly straightforwardly, just some, um, you know, everyone's laning pretty easily. No one's going too hard into any towers, which I think demonstrates that we weren't playing with any totally new people. Hammer here at the bottom, staying close to the wall when he's low on health. It was very difficult for me personally against the Raider because uh, he just outranges me. So I was like, oh man, I, I won't be able to be very offensive. Yeah, by the same token, uh, Leoric versus Illidan is a, it's, you can't really make too much headway against him. Uh, also, whiffing your Ws doesn't help much, because, you know, he's good at the game and all. Right. It's well, much no, easier. Squirrely, squirrely, man. He's a squirrely guy. He is. They tend to group up a lot. We saw them at the beginning, like, 3v2 in the middle, and, like, they often, like, roamed and got serious advantages, but secured very few kills for it. Importantly, even though they are roaming, you can see that they never leave a lane totally alone, so that way they don't lose XP in the attempt to maybe get a kill or two. So the fact that they don't get kills is probably a sign that they are playing well rather than doing what they're doing poorly, I think. That same for us, too. Like, the fact that we don't give up kills when they are very often, like, uh power playing against us and that we never really give up a lane that's really important um because in the early game their composition with the Tyrande, uther um sonia at any time if done correctly they can just go to a lane and just take out me especially which they're doing right now because i press e by accident <laughs> <laughs> which was actually i was trying to confuse them and throw them off give them a juke so then you saw Tyrande miss her stun. It's really advanced play, you know, so. <laughs> but um, it was very important that we didn't give up a lot of kills, especially. Uh, right now, it's uh, just, they had just have one kill. Yeah. Uh, they do pull ahead of us at some point, but it takes them quite a while, despite us having relatively, uh, I would say our matchups, like, we couldn't push. But <laughs> we also failed. Yeah, they, and you can see they have complete, um, not complete, but they have map dominance yeah. due to this composition. You can see if you are if you ever play Hero League, you see this kind of composition. Uh, you have to tell your team, like, hey, be careful early game because you're, you're going to get ganked. Yeah, so level uh, four is come and gone. Tell us about the next set of talents before we hit seven. Illidan, uh, from what I remember, is standard throughout the entire... Um, uh, throughout the entire game. Rainer is their uh, main damage 
he's going to be getting Focus Attack, which is the go-to for Gaiman. Some people pick up Vampiric Assault, but I feel like uh, with that, it builds the bad habit of staying in lane a lot to get your stacks. Nice. Because you, you'll you just be alone. You need to be looking and participating in other battles. Um, on there, and everything's pretty standard. Uh, Uther going to pro build Conjurers with Boundless Conviction and Tyrande with the Protective Shield, which is nice with some uh, frontline warriors, especially with Illidan. Now they're making a serious push here. They just got map objectives. They're coming after our forts. They're 4v3 up in the top lane, and uh, I think you guys actually managed to pop Raynor down in the bottom 2v1. Taking off. Right. And earlier, so we had talked about not losing abandoning a lane. We did a little bit between levels five and six down in the bottom. Uh, Rainer didn't manage to push it in terribly much because they turned in the objectives and then everyone shifted. And uh, then Rainer sort of pushed, uh, held back, and then eventually got killed. So we we made it perfect, a slight mistake there in leaving that lane alone for a bit because we were all, I think, four of us in the center and then one in top. Yeah. So here they take the first two towers, which gives them. Um... Uh, what, about a half level XP advantage? Um, you no, know, we're still one for one kill. We do hit level seven. Uh, are there any surprises here, Devin? At level seven? Yeah. The the only surprise um, that I would see would be putting on the clinic for Raynor. Uh, that's actually a, a big surprise. And stop me at any time if there's something important going on. Uh, putting on the clinic, it, it reduces the cooldowns when you're around minion deaths. Like I said, was talking about earlier, um, you can get a lot of stacks because you're constantly around minions dying. Putting on the clinic also amplifies... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at level 16 he goes bullseye so that he can get more Qs out. So Illidan goes pretty deep, a habit of his, um, but does not pay for it. He is incredibly good at escaping uh, throughout the whole game. He was squirrely. <laughs> he, was a, he was a little bit annoying. Yeah, so here uh, we see a Sentinel go between Eskimo and Aladek as they turn in. It goes right over the uh, cocoon and misses both of them, letting them get a full turn in. Despite her knowing exactly where to go. Also, uh, up here at the top, Leoric turns in uh, seven of his 25 gems. Interesting. Uh, and then we get into this big team fight where we blow away Sonya. Sonya. Later on, we definitely get... Um, we realize that Sonya really overextends. Um, we'll see in a later how they transpire. Um, Diablo goes down, but he has 100 stacks, so he's back in five seconds, and Leoric goes down. This, this was kind of important of a fight um, of losing people because this is where we were uh, on the same talent and right before uh, level 10. Uh, so they were able to get it like a full level lead, which is about what they were beforehand, but now they have ultimates over us. Yeah, so and they blow their AoE ults right more. there. Um, it does net them another kill on Leoric me. Uh, and Diablo kind of wanders around inside Starfall and Hyperion for a while without losing more than half his health. I'm surprised that um, if we're looking at the ultimates, um, they have a lot of AoE damage with uh, a Hyperion. Um, the Illidan Metamorphosis is somewhat of an AoE, not really. Tyrande Starfall, and uh, Uther went Divine Storm with uh, Illidan and uh, Sonya. Divine Shield is extremely strong. Yeah, so there are four kills ahead at this point. Um... And the Divine Shield would have been particularly strong. So you see there, Illidan wanders around a little too long and gets hit by the uh, Precision Strike. That and various snipes are the kind of thing that Divine Shield can save them from and save a kill, which later on in the game is 60 seconds or so of not having Illidan or not having Sonya. So it would have been, I think, advisable for him to have gone for the Divine Shield. Their defensive ult by uh, Raynor after he pops his heal to force us back a little bit or at least like, make that engage hard. We blow up Uther. Going for that Divine Storm? Did he use it? Um, I can't really see. He did not. Uh, you can... Yeah. 
Yeah, you can check in the uh, in the cooldowns in the tab screen. Okay, they so did the, not. Yeah, the bottom lane is doing its thing. There, Tehran moves down. Devin, you move down. Uh, the center lane, we've got Sonya pushing back after we pushed it towards them, and there are four of us up here just waiting. Illidan, once again, uses his ult to escape like a boss. Um, and then I sort of waste a precision strike there. Um, He's a little bit too far back to do any kind of zoning since they were already moving back. Yeah. Devin, you get bloated up. Yeah, I was, I was out of position in that. Um... I think that's from kind of. I play a lot of Hammer. It's definitely my my main character, mm -hmm. uh, hero. And um, the Divine Storm did catch me off guard a couple times because when I see an Uther, I don't expect that extra stun because I watch uh, people's cooldowns, and um, it just it really caught me off guard. I was like, oh my god, about the Divine uh, Storm. Now, Rain are getting serious damage against this keep. They're only three kills ahead. Um, but then they're pushing us here in the middle lane. And they have their web weavers out. I think this is probably the point where they start to gain a huge lead on uh, structures and therefore get a big XP boost during this uh, particular map objective phase. Yeah, it, uh, the it's web good. weaver is pushing all by itself at the top and at the bottom Illidan is helping it push. And I think they take all of our forts in this one push. It's especially difficult for us to defend um, as well, even as a team, because uh, they're they're at a talent advantage as well. Mm -hmm. And this is where Illidan and Raynor both have Giant Killer, and uh, makes it really difficult for uh, Leoric and our Diablo to really get in the work. But so you body block Illidan, he has to use to survive. That Illidan. <laughs> so wily. Sonya, we all wish you would die. But it almost does, but not quite. Not quite. I so, like that though. If if we saw it, um, we had a, quite a few of low people, um, at, on on our end too. It could have gone either way. Yeah, four and of us were in returning really on our team. I think uh, we would have been wiped. The yeah, we up. managed to walk out without losing anyone. So do they. And we're only two kills behind. And we have our level 13, which is good. Yeah, and, uh, like, I still have a ton of gems that, fortunately, we did not lose. Let's see here. I'm looking, I'm trying to see, I, I haven't picked a talent yet, and I think I'm trying to decide which would be best. Because I've noticed that I haven't been able to siege in any of the team fights. And then, oh, that's great on Nova. Here, I, I sort of overextend and get out of position. I hit the Tyrande and almost get her, but then her stun hits me, and then that gives the, the rest of the team time to close in on me and just obliterate me there. So uh, it may be that I just have needed a little bit more map awareness there. I don't think that the rest of the team was hidden, per se. I just wasn't looking. Yeah, now, no, they could have made a lot more of a push. Like, this, that we are, like, kite retreating. Um, we don't lose too many gems. They could have done a lot more if they hadn't, at the very beginning, against just minions, burned Hyperion and Starfall. Divine Storm as well. And Divine Storm. So yeah, the, all of their really useful collateral siege and like AoE damage is offline when they chase us back to our towers, and they can't really push them down due to that. I've noticed in a lot of games when there's a Nova, it'll fluster some people. And they did burn three ults for two kills um, on a Nova and a Hammer, which But is they already good. had those kills even. Like, the Starfall just wiped a minion wave no. and chunked me a tiny bit, but I'm Leoric. And they'd already killed you when that happened. The Hyperion, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So I think often you see them actually, like, burning those for little return. When they could have at least waited till they pushed the lane. Nice chunk on Rainer there from that. Uh... Yeah, so that precision strike is really what you want to do. It did two things. It zoned back two of their players and then trapped against us two of the other players. It split their team in half there for yeah. a couple of seconds. And it forced Rainer to pop a heal. Uh... Also, uh, 
Diablo went down, but he had 100 stacks, so he's back in five seconds, and I'm up here. This may be where I accident I forget I'm gonna respawn and just die. No, it's not this one. Definitely happens, though. So we triggered Web Weavers before initiating that team fight, and though they lost it and killed, or they won, killed two of us, got four kills ahead, um, our Web Weavers do do a significant push, keeping Illidan out of this middle combat. And we blow up Tarande. Yeah, we got the Tarande. The Diablo was able to pick her up and just bring her towards us, which was really strong because we don't. Uh, she was able to um, use her Starfall right before she died. Yeah. Which was nice. Uh, right now, Illidan is engaging on me in the back. We have both of our tanks uh, forward. Um, probably going to lose the Diablo. Uh, Nova's getting a clear shot on the Illidan, but of course, he gets away. <laughs> Cause yeah. He's now this is where we were like, wait, they are not supporting her at all. And I believe Crushing Hope, that 10% uh, max health damage from Leoric's Drain Hope of uh, talent, kills uh, their Sonya there to end. We got a we got a two for one, which was nice. Yeah. Especially when you're uh, down a level because you get extra experience for uh, kills when you're uh, below a level. Or and then I believe much. Nova makes short work of Illidan when he follows a bit too hard here. This is kind of where things turn. The six, level 16 talents um, definitely help us out a lot more than it helps them. Yeah, so for instance, especially with Illidan and Raynor, the pinning shot that I take on Nova increases damage they take from everyone. So suddenly, uh, Raynor's uh, ability, his automatic heal, and Illidan's ability to heal quickly with his auto attack aren't going to be sufficient if they are being focused even a little. Which is yeah. great in, in kind of casual play, because a lot of, a lot of pros, you know, they, they'll all focus one person with their practice, but here, uh, Diviner, uh, Divine Storm's already popped. We have all the ultimates going down. We're kind of in a retreat, but uh, this is kind of the tactic that wins us the game in the end with um, uh, Nova picking off people who overextend and uh, my constant damage just by auto attacking. Um, the Illidan can't, like you see their backline, they can't keep up with the Illidan. Um, yeah. Tarande is a decent support and Luther is a decent support for helping them, but that's only if you take Divine Shield. And um, that's why Rhaegar is uh, a great... Uh, <laughs> that was a funny new bomb strike. <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah, so they trade their two ults for Diablo, who comes back in five seconds. And they chase me down and burn me. I have not burned my ult, uh, but their ults are on such a long cooldown. And now they're down Raynor and Illidan, taking all their giant killer, leaving... Hmm... And sort of, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Devin, you can see that they do kind of get flustered by a Nova, because they will half-heartedly chase me and then decide not to, uh, and that kind of, it's, it's kiting, sort of uh, split kiting almost. I pull them away from the rest of the kite, which kind of gets them separated out a bit, and that's what really harms them throughout the entirety of the rest of the game. You are, you are, you're, you're like a, a hero's Moses partying the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too bad they're not the blue sea. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we're getting the, the uh, Uther. He's probably going to get away if I know Uthers. <laughs> and I know Uthers. <laughs> I know Uthers. Uthers is one of a great support. So um, both teams bunched up in the middle lane. This is where like they are very close to turning in. And Devin tells us not to worry about it, not to stress out, because we really can't prevent someone somewhere from turning in one gem. And so we just kind of let it go and focus on keeping together as a team. It, there's probably a danger of us having split up to try and cover both of the turn-in points and then end up getting killed. And then they would have turned in anyway, and then we would have been dead, and yeah. they'd have the objective. Plus, Devin has to go back and clear minions at the top. Uh, so we're fighting 5v4 and they turn in uh, right as they push. Uh, Diablo push pops an ult to kind of delay. Note they burned Hyperion early and Starfall. Um, 
Very generally, I think they are a little bit trigger happy with their ults. Yeah. Um, especially the three people with the uh, actual AoE ults. They almost top them as soon as they get them on cooldown and there's something to do. Which yeah. of course leaves Illidan without any support if he uh, does his ult is in the middle of us. Otherwise, he could do a lot more work. Yeah, Illidan goes very deep here to try and get that Lily kill, which he does secure. Um, but uh, so we trade Diablo and Lily for an Illidan kill. Uh, I do come in from behind while that team fight is happening and march of the Black King into their rear ranks, lower chunking them, but not actually killing them. And this gives us time to recover uh, from the Web Weaver push, uh, while Illidan at least isn't harassing us. Uh, Tehran. Yeah, right. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, uh, right now we're just focusing on defending. Uh, we're down two people, uh, especially our healer. Um, a good note for anybody when it's especially in the late game, do not engage without your healer. Unless it is a bona fide, you are going to win this fight. Because it, it's just gonna it's, it's gonna end up we could have lost three three keeps uh, not three, two, if we would have engaged and got a they got a team life. If not they would have won the game. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. The home team advantage is gonna mean our Lily is back in play long before their Illidan gets back to us, and they just kinda pull back um, our minion waves catch up before our top tower takes much damage, uh, and we go for these bruisers um, while we're all together. They group up down at the bottom to take the siege camp, uh, which is, I don't know, is that a good choice, trying to damage our keep? Because they're not going to be taking towers or anything too weak. I feel like those siege, uh, what are the giants? Yeah. Mummies? Uh, are gonna have to attack our keep, and that's not gonna earn them as much in the short term. And we blow up their Uther. Uther do did go to level 20 talent to revive, so it's not a full death, but that was for free to to get his cooldown on that on that uh, ability. Minute. Where, but it has a 180 second cooldown. So for the next you know two and a half minutes, he's not gonna have you know anything. Yeah. Oh no, that's three minutes, isn't it? Yeah, yes. three minutes. And right. as so, you say, those bottom siege giants, they don't even get to the ruins of the like the first gate before we take care of them. And then we're right back to the center of the team fight, so they really didn't get much out of those. Yeah, we're all together. That was an excellent wave clear uh, precision strike. And also it cuts them again. So I keep them uh, separated a little bit, even for a few seconds, that keeps both of their healers a bit farther back. Yep, Diablo goes down again, I go down, Diablo had 100 souls, they burned all their ults, and I think this is where they realize they really can't push anymore because... Uh, they, um, the, the team fights are, are always going in our favor with that vulnerability, the constant kiting. It, the the kiting is just a result of them not being able to keep up with the Illidan. Yeah, and with Diablo back so instantaneously, they secure an Illidan cure. Now we're three, <laughs> we're three players ahead, and I will be back shortly in the fray because I'm Leoric. And now we go and take this boss, and shortly uh, afterwards, we're also I think going to turn in for a uh, simultaneous. Map yeah, we definitely do. I go down while we're getting the boss, while I feel like it's safe. And I'm like, okay, I think I can turn this in and then get that while we're like a little bit into the um, uh, the boss. Cause I saw Sonya's gonna come back, but a Sonya, Uther and Tarande, the best they're gonna do is take out maybe one person and they wouldn't even secure the boss and they'd end up killing themselves. Yeah, Tarande tries to harass us. I shamefully almost go down to the boss. And so now uh, we have a little bit of a disagreement between us about uh, the wisdom of our next decision here. So you can see that we have some web weavers pushing the top. The boss is pushing the top. And then we elect, uh, either by voice coordination or just unanimous uh, watching each other, to kind of go up top with the boss and the web weaver. Yeah, now I definitely think, my thought is, we definitely... I think it was right to take this outer fort. And I wonder if we really need to push with the boss, because I feel like the boss didn't accomplish too much and really wasn't going to. Um, 
up here, and maybe we could have. Now, uh, Sergeant Hammer does take this uh, these outer towers or inner towers here, but I think we could have crushed this other outer keep and just left them to deal with the boss up here. And I think we wouldn't have, we might not have even gotten both of the towers and the gate here up top if we hadn't pushed with that boss, because they would have just burned it down. We do push them back for a total of a couple of seconds while we are escorting that boss, which gives it enough time to take down the outer, uh, the inner gate and towers, That's which just true. gives them a little XP. And it does force them to ignore a Hammer in the middle doing some work. Yeah, so Hammer definitely could have been collapsed on. The best uh, choice. Uh, also, yeah, in this, we do get this outer keep anyway because it was at like zero health. So you're probably right. Uh, just uh, something that occurred to me. In general, though, it is more advisable, especially with something like a boss, a late game boss. This is already at about uh, maybe 22 minutes, 23 minutes. 25. They are uh, powerful in their own right. They can do damage very fast, and so they will get something done, even without any help, unless the enemy team really, really focuses on them and has lots of burst damage. So yeah, as a general rule, um, late game bosses and objectives that push uh, can be left alone, probably. Yeah, so here we blow up Rainer early, which makes this fight go much, much better for us. Um, we are just staying alive. Oh, maybe Diablo died, but it was at 100 again. Diablo really see a very ineffective star call there. Um, all their ults, except for Wrath the Berserker, are on a serious cooldown. 46 seconds, three of them died. Uh, I think you do hunt down the Uber, Devin. Yeah, I get the Uther with, uh, um, anybody who wants to play Start and Hammer, Advanced Lava Strike is, is a really great talent. Uh, if you're facing against a ton of stuns, um, it allows you to get solid damage from a considerable distance, longer than your siege rage. I wouldn't be surprised if I could actually hit their keep with my napalm, maybe halfway in between the keep and the uh, and the wall, with that na advanced napalm strike. Nice. And now we're actually ahead. Uh, no, we're at 20 kills to 22, but we're actually a level ahead now. And that's because we started getting so many more hero kills uh, towards the end there that while we were behind, we got a lot of extra XP because that's how the comeback mechanic works. And then we just kept getting the hero kills and squeaked ahead. And we also, in that last push with the boss and objective up top and hammer mid, got a number of structures. So that's how, despite being overall behind in kills until right now, um, we ended up being ahead on XP. Yeah, so Devin, talk a little bit about when to siege up as Hammer, because I noticed you played a lot of unsieged Hammer, or at least that's what it looked like to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm not um, that skilled with her. That was an excellent uh, <laughs> precision strike. That was beautiful. You know what? That's that, I think that's what Illidan gets for being so freaking squirrely in the, middle, um, the early game. Yeah, overconfident. I get stunned again by Tyrande. This happens all game long. But I believe this is this is the end right here. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the general flow of this game. So they got really far ahead uh, in ports and a little ahead in kills for most of the game. But then they give it up when we hit, what, level 13 to 16? It seems like level 16 is really where things start to turn around. Yes. Um, I think one of the biggest things, once we were on evil, once we were able to take fair fights, meaning that uh, we were kind of in the same... Uh, XP range, like within one level, that our team fighting went uh, very well with us realizing that you need to kite because I'm gonna say it again, Ill the the backline couldn't keep up with Illidan. Um, not only that, but uh, a long time ago I realized um, their ults, all of them have long cooldowns. Yeah. Illidan, 120 second, Hyperion, 100, Charfall, 100. Um, my ult doesn't take any time. Uh, March of the Black King was our highest one with 80, but, oh wait, no, with Apocalypse. But Precision Strike is every 60 seconds, and Napalm is constant. And, uh, Lili's ult, 70 seconds. You know, uh, ult, we always had our ults, and they were really liberal with theirs. They just... Yeah, I think they burned Starfall and Hyperion on top of each other a lot, and theirs are pretty easy for us to walk out of since... 
Uther, Uther either had to dive in and stun us for those to be incredibly effective, and uh, whenever he tried, they didn't seem to have him off cooldown, or he got blown up, or he had to retreat before he could do it. Um, so that massive AoE damage mostly got wasted, I feel like, and then they didn't have him when they could have uh, done some guaranteed damage to our buildings as well, which I think would have been much more effective. Definitely. So here, so let's take can, a look. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it was just I was looking here at the end stats. So you can see that things are pretty balanced if you just look at these numbers. Uh, so obviously, uh, our hammer has the highest damage numbers by far in both uh, categories, except for hero damage, um, where Rainer kind of outshines him, but has the highest numbers on our team. And um, I don't have terribly high hero damage, but that's because... I am doing a lot of takedown assists, as you can see, rather than pure kills. And so that's how I feel to play Nova is uh, the best way, because if you're trying to go for the kills yourself, you're invariably going to overextend. I just used my um, Envenom, I just used my pinning shot, and then made people vulnerable, weak, whatever, and then the rest of the team collapsed in on them to actually close the kill. Yeah, that so was really important for like kill securing, definitely. Yeah, so this was a really nice game. Like We were at a disadvantage for a little while. We fought back. We made it to our higher level talents, and then we pushed ahead. Now, we only had one uh, random uh, player with us. That was Lili. Um, the rest of us weren't necessarily all voice coordinated, but uh, we all knew each other. Three out of four voice. Three out of five voice coordination. Four out of five sort of uh, uh, in the party queue. Yeah, so uh, that's how that game went. It was a really fun game to play because at first it felt like we were making no progress, simply not dying, uh, but it turned out to be that's what we needed. I also think we should mention that Diablo's having 100 stacks, like four or five times brought him back in five seconds. Um, and often we traded him for a kill, I felt like. Well, he did go that... Um... I think it's Black Soul Stone ability at the beginning, where it only took him 60 souls to res. So and I definitely I don't made use of it, it, but it probably played a huge, huge role in being able to get back in the team fights, whether to defend or to just be back in the fight to help us. Yeah, he definitely yeah. scored an Illidan kill thanks to that um, in the mid, right when we were turning things around, I think. So, a well-played game, a lot of fun. Our opponents did really well. Um, I thought Illidan was especially hard to pin down <laughs> and escape many times. But, uh, yeah. It was a good Illidan. So, All right, so yeah. that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, you should press the thumbs up button. Uh, if you like this and want to see more of it, you should consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Now... Uh, this is currently on Flop's channel. Uh, coming in January, we will continue doing things like this on our Bleak House collaborative channel. And when we do, talking about our own games, talking about ourselves play is all well and good, but we'd also like to talk about you guys playing. So, if any of you are watching and you have some Heroes of the Storm matches that you would like to see commentated, please do send them to us. And when we get the time, we would love to talk them to death because that's what we love to do to everything. Yeah, and a special thank you to uh, Devin Eskimo Aww. and uh, James Oris uh, for joining us, our first community members to really uh, play uh, on our team, where we want, you know, as many people as possible, of course, and as many voices as possible. Thank you for joining us on uh, commentary, Devin. Oh, no problem. I'll do it anytime. I'll stick around. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Yeah, let's wrap this up. So, uh, quite a pleasure. I will tell you to uh, remember that it's all downhill from here, especially with a game this good. Yeah, and until you do send us some of your videos or do thumbs up and watch our videos, I don't care what you do.